This was an incredible case to be a part of. Melvin and Von Seal Hill were two special people and, and what happened to them was, was, was tragic. The number of deliberate violations of court orders and the uh, instances of bad conduct by Fordance lawyers in this one case probably equal all the other auto products cases I've ever been involved in put together. They knew how to do it stronger. They knew how to do it safer. They chose not to do it. Um, and they spent more time, you know, lobbying the federal government for lower safety standards than they did making their vehicles safer. Melvin and Von Seal Hill were the uh, victims of this particular crash. They were farmers in Macon County, Georgia. And um, Melvin was 74, Von Seal was 62 when they died. Had two sons, Kim and Adam Hill, who were the plaintiffs in the case. Just really fine people. Jim called me and asked me if I'd be interested in being associated with him on the case. And, you know, he sent me the picture of this pickup truck upside down with, unfortunately, the hills still in it and told me it only rolled over one and a half times. And I said, hell yeah, I'm in. When it rolls over, it shouldn't squish flat. That's, that, that's, that, that was the sum and substance of the case. And Ford knew of the danger. They knew when they started selling these trucks in the fall of 1998 that the roof was a, 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 like a paper mache or something, just pitiful. We went up to Detroit and took their first corporate representative's deposition, showed him the picture of the truck upside down with the hill still in it, and asked him if Ford took the position that that truck was safe, and he said, absolutely. And that, that was almost insulting. Kim Hill at the first trial on cross-examination told the Ford lawyer, he said, I'll tell you what we'll do. He said, if you'll agree for Ford Motor Company to buy back every one of these trucks at fair market value from the people who own them and get them off the road, you don't have to pay me and my brother a dime. That lawyer was speechless. He looked like a deer caught in the headlights. What was he supposed to say? Ford deliberately procured a mistrial the first time we tried the case in 2018. Jim retained me to handle the appeal uh, from the sanctions order. Uh, and after we were successful in that, it, uh, Jim called me and said, I'd love for you to come try the case with me second time around. They never backed down. You know, they had this theory that you dive into the roof, the roof doesn't crush down on you, which we think we debunked pretty well and uh, the jury thought so anyway. Their argument is that in the nanosecond before the roof crushes down on an occupant, the occupant dives into the roof and that's when the injury occurs. Now, uh, the problem with that is uh, that's not what happens. Going into jury deliberation, I was confident that we would get a verdict in our favor. The evidence was overwhelming. What number it would be, I had no idea. This judge reads the verdict, and sometimes he kind of mumbles <laughs> with all due respect. And the judge said 1.7 billion. I thought he said 1.7 million. Gerald turns around and said, did he say million or billion? <laughs> he looked at it and he turned around, billion. <laughs> so it was kind of a sweet way to end it. That's that's the largest verdict in, in uh, Georgia history by far. Hopefully this verdict will do something either to cause Ford to change its behavior or to alert consumers who, who read about it, uh, you know, to, to switch trucks. I hope that this case saves lives.